Welcome to the ProStructures Reinforced Concrete Drawing Creation Workflow videos. In this series, you will learn about positioning of rebar, drawing creation and annotation, as well as producing bar bending schedules. With our 3D model complete, we are still missing bar marks on the rebar, as can be seen in the tooltip. To position the rebar, we will use positioning tool that can be found both under the data reporting and drawing production tabs under numbering and marking. Let us click on the positioning icon. Here under concrete positioning, we'll set everything up. First, the type of marks, numerical, alphabetical, alphanumerical, or macro. Then we'll specify if all elements get bar marks or only the ones without bar marks or the elements that have been changed. Below that, we will set our starting marks for concrete, rebar cages, and rebar themselves. You can quickly reset all values to zero with this button. Next with this button, you enter the automatic positioning settings. On the left, we specify what elements will be taken into consideration for positioning, both in terms of concrete and rebar. On the right, we specify the sorting of elements, so which elements get their marks first, and then, if element is of the same type, by which of its properties are they marked. Sorting, again, can be specified for concrete and rebar separately. Then, in the bottom left corner are the tolerance settings, so what is the minimum length of elements, and the dimensional and weight tolerances. On the right, you can allow overriding of existing bar marks, as well as equal part detection for concrete or rebar. Now, let us accept those settings. And now for the most important part of the positioning setup, the bar factory settings window. We first need to select the shape definition file, which contains all the shape codes for this particular standard. Even if you don't use shape codes in your industry or national standard, you still need to select an RSF file for the positioning process to generate bar marks. With this complete, let's focus on the settings here. First, if you want bar marks assigned to straight bars, then both mark straight bars and mark straight vary bars should be checked. Then, if your standard requires use of alpha codes, those settings can be found here. For now, I'll remove the alpha code. Below that, we can create our bar mark macro. By default, it contains the bar size and alpha code filed by bar mark. I'll leave just the mark represented by pound sign. I'll also change the number of digits from marks to three and turn preceding zeros on. In this cell, we can see a preview how our marks will look like. And lastly, the draping bar settings. By default, all radial bars exceeding code dimensions will be scheduled as straight bars. No draping option will schedule all radial bars as such. As managed straight will force radial bars exceeding code limits to be positioned as straight bars with unique shape codes. With all the settings complete, we can move on to the actual positioning of rebar. Now we can either select elements manually with our cursor or simply click on the choose all button. First concrete elements will be positioned and their data displayed. Then, after we accept, the rebar will be marked and in the new window, we'll have the opportunity to verify the properties like main dimensions, grade, size, shape codes, and so on. This time, when we click on OK button, positioning is complete and all rebar now have bar marks attached. In the next video, we'll discuss managing non-standard rebar shapes. 
If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.